What's poppin' friends and fam? I'm Lukey and I'm glad you're here for this exciting episode of iCraft SMP. Today we're starting off in my basement. What are we doing here, you may be wondering. Well, I decided to start this episode by, well, there's a fix that I want to do with my mob farm here. But first things first, I want to say I have new channel art. I put a video up on my channel not too long ago explaining why I made it and stuff like that. So you guys should have already seen it by now. <clears throat> so it's already ran its course for a little bit. I'm still loving it. Anyway, next thing I want to, I want to talk about something. The thing I want to talk about is my videos. I think Something I don't like about my videos is I spend way too much time at the beginning of the episode kind of recapping the previous episode and explaining things that I did off camera. I think that's a big old waste of time. Instead of recapping the previous episode like I do, I should just give like a short and sweet version. Like for instance, in the last episode, if you didn't check it out, you're really missing out because we did some awesome epic fun 1.12 exploration getting a bunch of advancements see that was short and sweet i don't have to go over anything but anyway we're here in my mob farm for today's episode because um it's not as efficient as i want it to be uh you just kind of saw there that's one of the reasons well okay for one spiders are too big to fall all the way down it's kind of a design flaw for two well, I mean, I don't actually need spiders in here considering the whole reason I made this was for the three spider spawners in the middle. So what I'm going to do is a neat little trick to make this to where it only spawns creepers because that's really the only mob I need. And I wanted to bring stone bricks up here too and I completely forgot, I derped. Anyway, so as I was saying about my videos, I spend too much time uh, explaining things that I did off camera and a really simple solution to that would be to not do as much off camera so for instance this project that I'm doing right here uh, would be the prime example of something that I would do off camera you know changing this over to being like a general mob spawner to only spawning creepers that's something i'll do off camera than just talk about it but i figured instead i would just bring you guys along that way i don't have to show it off later kill two birds with one stone i feel like it's a pretty good idea so let's head back up to the top and my elytra is kind of making it difficult okay so first thing what i want to do is kill this spider get out of here spiders spiders scare me they're bad and they bite you and stuff. <clears throat> so first thing what I want to do is on each of these, I want to fill in one of the corner blocks. doesn't matter which corner, but I'm going to do it like that because having a two by two space here, spiders can spawn. And we don't want them to spawn. We want only creepers to spawn. Now I was watching a video from Rendog and he was showing off that he learned that if you put trap doors on top of here, only creepers can spawn because the hitboxes, uh, creepers hitboxes are a little bit smaller than the other mobs like witches and skeletons and zombies. So creepers will be able to spawn here, but nothing else will. So what I'm gonna need to do is go to each of these platforms and change out the ceiling. Now it's really awesome that I can actually walk underneath these. That uh, really makes this a lot easier. Imagine trying to do this without being able to walk underneath it that would really suck anyway this is gonna take a little bit of time and I'm down to work on this but I'm sure you guys aren't down to watch the whole thing because there are a lot of floors of this I've been kind of expanding it slowly I don't know if I've actually showed you how I have expanded this but 
yeah, I've decided to kind of go overboard. And this is going to be awesome whenever it's only spawning creepers. I'm going to have gunpowder for days. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to work on this and I'll see you soon. So what is going on now, you might be wondering? Well, this is completely unrelated to what I was doing in the last clip. By the way, I finished up laying down all those trap doors. They are on every single platform in here. It might be kind of hard to see. Let me throw a torch right there, maybe to light some of these up and then. So yeah, there's trap doors on the bottom of each and every one of these platforms and it's working. It's, it's not the quickest, but it's working. Every once in a while, I get a mob in there that isn't a creeper. I don't know how. I mean, I know there's a couple pieces of packed ice in there that mobs can spawn on, but I mean, sometimes I see them like fall down and I'm like, where are they coming from? I didn't think they could spawn on here. Maybe, maybe sometimes the game just doesn't recognize one of these trap doors or something. Yeah, it, the, the game looks really weird with these hitboxes on, by the way. <laughs> I kind of got used to it, but it's probably weird for you guys. Yeah, there's no creepers in here right now. Oh, there's one. There's a little guy coming down. Yeah, it's it's not the best, but it's okay. So let me check the chest real quick. If I look in here, there's about two stacks of gunpowder. Um, I did empty the chest out. Um, like after I finished building that, I emptied the chest out. And then in the time that I've been working on this well kind of working on this doing some other stuff too but in that time that's what i got so i don't know it's not crazy fast but it's okay so anyway um so there's a chunk border right against this wall so i just went ahead and slabbed it over because i'm never going to use that for any reason oh if you haven't guessed i'm laying down these fences to kind of mark out where uh slime spawning will be yep that's kind of what I'm going to test out. So these ones along the edges, since they're not like full chunks, like let's see, the end of this chunk is over there, a couple blocks into the wall. So since this isn't a full chunk, I'm not gonna use it for a slime farm regardless. So like if this chunk is a slime chunk, I'm just gonna slab it over. Whereas slime chunks in the middle, I'm thinking about uh, well, I'm going to find where they are, and then I'm going to most likely make a farm. I don't know yet. I'm probably going to. It'll probably be something simple. I mean, I don't need crazy amounts of slime for anything, but hey, I figured since I have so many slimes bothering me all the time while I'm in here, I might as well. So I had these two lines of fences running parallel with one, one another. I'm also going to... Lay down fences like this. So eventually there's just gonna be chunk sized squares everywhere. Hey, do you know you can jump over a fence if you have an elytra on? Let me show you. Nope, not like that. Uh, okay, maybe, uh, come on. <laughs> okay, well, it's it's being shy. Okay, there we go. So yeah, that's, that's a neat trick. So yeah, everywhere where these lines are, I just go along and each one I always do it on like this side of the line just to kind of make sure they're all even and anywhere where there's like a torch on the ground I just been putting a sea lantern in the ground then the fence on top of that but anyway I will finish up doing all this off camera and in the meantime I will be watching to see uh, which one of these pens the slimes are spawning in and then I guess I'll kind of go from there. So a slime just spawned in over there. So I know somewhere over there, there's going to be a slime chunk. So, hey, that's good to know. But anyway, yep, that's what we're doing this for. Anyway, on to the actual project for this episode. Okay, we're back in my base hub. And I think I have a good name for this place now. I didn't have a name for it for the longest time. But I think I'm going to call it the Ruins of Zilla. I think it's an okay name better than any other name I thought of. That was actually the only name I thought of. So it's cool. If you like it, if you don't like it, let me know. Still got this guy walking around. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. So the ruins of Zilla. One thing I want to do is add some vines in here because I don't know. I think it'll look cool. And is that it? Yeah, I think that should be it. I don't want to 
overcrowd that room with vines. Okay, next order of business. I have the shulker box sitting right here. Inside this shulker box, we have some new 1.12 blocks. We have some concrete, some powder, some terracotta. And in my storage room, I don't have anywhere to put those right now. I think it's time for a new extension, kind of, but these ones are all full of spruce wood at the moment because of when we chopped down a whole bunch of trees in the farming district, I ran out of room in my wood chest and I put bulk storage over here. But we can go ahead and change these over for concrete ones. I just kind of wanted to show that off so this is an expandable storage room which is pretty cool now we're going to be working on this area over here this is where i have my villagers or at least this is where i currently have them i'm going to be moving them pretty soon so i actually moved the entrance to this place not by much now the entrance is right here where it used to be right here i think the reason i moved it and i i actually only had to move it slightly which is really awesome actually so okay can i get out of this water anyway anyhow okay so the reason i had to move it is because for what i have to do i need to have direct access to the sky and above that glass that we have there the bridge is blocking it zombie get out of here you're blocking my talking what we got another all right zombie apocalypse okay well i am being swarmed at the minute but <laughs> Anyway, so right there in that spot, what's really cool is... Okay, this is... <laughs> oh, Elytra, you are causing me a whole bunch of problems right now. I am stuck. <laughs> okay, I think we're safe. Anyway, as I was saying, right here above this ladder actually has direct access to the sun, and I fell in the water like a dummy. Let's climb up here. Okay, so the only things that are in the way are vines, leaves, and grass. And I'm pretty sure all those, you know, those don't count as, like, obstructing the view to the direct sky. So, that's pretty cool. That works, oh, that works well for what we're doing. So, that means in this area here, I'm going to put in a whole bunch of doors, and they're going to have the skylight that they need so let's start working on that first and foremost how about i kind of partify the way down here maybe a little bit of spruce wood right here gonna change up where the ladder is have it coming straight down instead of to the side i think that's a better option in this case and then the doors will start right here now i don't know how many i need it's either it's either six or nine I'm gonna go with nine, just in case. And then there's gonna have to be a villager right around here somewhere. And it's gonna be one of these lucky villagers here. I'm gonna put a pole up in the corner. It's gonna say Max, Michael, and Pykel. You guys get to vote who it gets to be locked in there. Well, actually, it can only be Pykel or Max, because Michael actually, since he's my only farmer, I have to keep him reserved for farming stuff, because that's part of how this breeder works. So, okay, vote. It's either going to be Michael or Max. Who's it going to be? So my idea for this is, I want these villagers to feel like they're a welcome part of my base, so I kind of want to make this look a little homey if that makes sense. So I'm thinking about what if I make this area look like a house? Now I want to leave a few blocks here for wherever the villager guy needs to go. So how about I place some of these here? Yeah, something like that looks all right. Then we got our block palette on the hot bar now. Let's kind of randomize some of these blocks in here. I actually have been using this recipe book a little bit more. It comes in handy for crafting tedious things like stairs and trap doors and fences and things like that. It's actually pretty nice. It's growing on me. So I got these stairs because I want to make kind of a roof of sorts up here or at least it'll be like the front facade of a roof. It doesn't have to be the full thing or anything. You know, a really fun way to travel upwards in this game is just closing a door on yourself and hopping up. I wonder if there's any way to 
make an elevator where all you have to do is hold the space bar and there's redstone that opens and closes doors on top of you. That would be really cool. I bet it wouldn't work on servers though, just because I bet opening and closing doors would cause a little bit of lag. Hey, hey, I like the way this looks so far. I think obviously I'm gonna have to uh, dig out more space around here over time just because this looks really cramped in this space. Or maybe that's how we want it to look because maybe then we could have, say we take out a corner there and replace it with a pillar then what if we had like another house coming off this way and then they could kind of tie in together ah that might be kind of cool hey i kind of like this there is a zombie in here that's bad <laughs> where the heck did you come from uh i guess it's dark enough in here for mobs to spawn right now that is problematic. Okay, the doorway is just gonna be a trap door for nice and easy access. Plus villagers cannot open it and I can. So ha, eat that villagers. So I know I need the villager to sit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't know if he's allowed to be free roam or if he has to be like trapped somewhere. But every time I've seen one of these, the villager has been trapped somewhere, so pretty sure that's just how I'm going to do it. So I'm wondering if I can, like, trap him in a little structure just like that. That might be kind of cool. That way it doesn't take up too much space. So I guess if the trap door is like this and a villager is in here, he wouldn't be able to go anywhere. So, hey, I guess that's a good idea. Then we can just open these to hopefully make it easy for him to get in and out whenever we you know choose to move him around because whichever villager we put in here i don't want to keep them in here forever just because these three they're like they're like my homeboys they're my main guys i come here and hang out with them get a sip of coffee you know eat some lunch you know i hang out with them they're my boys so uh i don't want to keep them trapped in there forever i didn't actually mean to make that come that far out that was just scaffolding i can break those blocks too so yeah what about the inside of here i think for the floor design in here i want to do a design that i see often but i don't ever actually do myself it's by mixing up coarse dirt and spruce wood and i think i might even go with some logs as well uh, usually I see this with Podzil too, but I don't want to use Podzil. I don't know. I feel like it's just, I don't know. This doesn't seem right for me. <laughs> just doesn't rub me the right way. But I am using some stairs to give it some depth, some dimensions. Then whenever I do this part of the floor, obviously I'm going to have to replace all the doors because they will break for me. But I think the wall is just going to be right here. I'm not going to dig another block back. And it's just going to be with the same pattern. Okay, the interior is complete and it's looking pretty nice. It's looking pretty nice. It's all jumbled up in here. Spruce in the back. Doors here. I changed this slightly. I think I actually moved it forward a block. And yep, that's going to be it for this little house. And all that's left is putting the the lucky selected villager in there don't know who it's gonna be yet and let's see so now i think there needs to be a farming area and something else but first i need to look up the logistics of villagers i did some research and basically i think what i found was one villager has to be within the range of the village which is within five blocks of the center of each of the doors so that's what that guy in there is for he is the one villager that is within range there are nine doors of there and since there are less than 35 percent villagers than there are doors that means these guys will become prepared to breed to make more villagers to occupy that village and for these guys, they have to be outside of the five block range of the village, AKA those doors in there. So they have to be outside of that range. They have to be not too far, but not too close. So outside of five blocks, vertical and horizontal, my plan was to 
after having this initial house here, I was going to have another house kind of below it. And my plan was to kind of use the staircase of the roof of the house to act as like the stairway going up to this house. And I was going to make this area all nice and aesthetical, but I kept digging this ground lower and lower. And I'm thinking there's already a gap above that house. Wouldn't it make more sense to move that house up a little bit and move this house up a little bit so I don't have to dig down as far because that just means I'm gonna have to have a staircase leading down to it and I feel like that's just gonna look weird so I think what I'm gonna do is move this house upwards and move this house upwards and I'm kind of going to work on some aesthetics of the area and as far as these villagers are concerned these guys should be in breeding mode now like they're the right distance away and I've given them crops. These guys have each been traded with multiple times, but I guess I could trade with them some more just to make them happier. So other than that, I'm pretty sure it just takes time. So I'm going to have to wait this out. Hopefully while I'm working on changing this area, hopefully some of these guys will, you know, start to breed. But whenever I move this house up and break the doors, I think it's going to reset the village, which means it's going to take more time. So that's going to be fun. And it sounds like something that's going to have to be done off camera. So I guess for the meantime, this is where I'm going to end things off for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I sure did. I liked making this episode a whole lot. It felt, I don't know, it felt good for some reason. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, make sure to show your support by hitting the like button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And leave the friend zone, join the fam, want to know how, subscribe to my channel, and make sure to have a good night, day, morning, evening, whatever it is for you. Have a great one, and I will catch you next time.